Okay, so I, I I'm sorry I may be delayed, uh, but I told I told the gentleman uh, I'll try to lead as much as I can. Um, so just to kind of fill everybody in on kind of where we wanting to go this week, because like Kayla said, we are kind of throwing this together. Uh, we did get together for about 20 minutes and try to plan what we wanted you guys to talk about. Um, so what we're doing is hoping that we can just throw out uh, generations, your favorite sporting icons, uh, doesn't matter what sport, we may not know a lot about it or them, but we're willing to try to discuss it with you guys. So if you wanted to uh, put it either in the chat or pop your video on and let us know that there's somebody you want to talk about, uh, we're here to learn as much as we are to share who we think our icons are. Um, I don't know if anybody's watching The Last Dance uh, documentary going on right now, but I can tell you Jordan was a big icon of mine, of course, and you're learning some of the back uh, background story on that, which is fun. So we'll kind of leave it open. Uh, we'll, we'll introduce ourselves to start. I forgot Matt had a good idea. We'll introduce ourselves, who we are, uh, and then maybe who we follow the most, which you probably see some Chiefs and Cowboys. Don't, don't mind those guys. Uh, well, we'll talk about some real sports teams. I'm just kidding. I know a lot of you guys are from Missouri, so I apologize uh, if I'm starting off on the wrong foot. But my name is Jason Palmer. Uh, I do regional uh, sales and marketing for Aero. I am actually in Missouri right now myself, but my home base is in Minneapolis. And I am a huge uh, New England Patriots. Chicago White Sox uh, are kind of my two favorite teams. Uh, if I have to go to college, I go North Carolina. Um, I'm, I'm originally from North Dakota, so we don't have pro teams. So I get to kind of pick and choose who I want to be my, my favorite teams. And I was an antagonizer as a kid. So Whoever my dad and brother cheered for, I was cheering for the opposite team just because I wanted, I wanted to, to root against them. So that, that was me in a nutshell. Um, so I'm going to pass it off to you. Dustin, you're on my right. Do you want to go next? Sure. I'm the regional sales and marketing director as well. And uh, my, as you can see, my favorite team is the Dallas Cowboys. I also really like the St. Louis Cardinals and uh, I have recently gotten into hockey uh, with the Blues championship and everything um, that's kind of piqued my interest in the hockey and uh, so I'm kind of excited to, to learn a little bit about um, you know some people that I might not have uh, got to see um, during my time growing up so that's pretty exciting to me. <laughs> I'll pass it on to Matt. Is it me? Okay. My name is Matt Laporte. I'm a regional director as well. I grew up in Michigan, so unfortunately, I have a <laughs> I have rough teams to pull for. It's hard. It's hardwired in, though. I'm never going to give up on my Lions, my Tigers, um, Red Wings, Pistons. Back in the day, were a lot of fun. Um, go Blue. You know, when you grow up in Michigan, you got to pick Michigan or Michigan State. I was a Michigan family, but we can all agree. That we don't like Ohio State. Sorry. However, when I travel, <laughs> when I travel to Ohio State, I keep that on the down low. I don't like to get it out there because it's been a lot of years since Michigan has been competitive with Ohio State. I acknowledge it. You guys are awesome. Um, it really shouldn't oh, even be a rivalry. H. What? Oh, eight. Yeah, see? <laughs> and I tell you, you guys should be pumped every time Michigan comes up in the schedule. It's like a free win. It's like a bye week. Love it. <laughs> Let's go, Tim. Uh, I'm Tim Moore. I'm a regional director uh, of operations as well. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I've waited a long, long time to be able to say that. Um, been a fan since I was a kid. My parents were not big sports fans. Uh, so I came, uh, and I'm an only child. So I took this all on myself. I live just south of Kansas City, so I'm uh, a huge Red Kingdom uh, Chiefs fan as well as True to the Blue uh, Kansas City Royals. Um, those are really my two main sports um, is, is baseball and, and football. I do watch a little bit of the others, but, but not really to follow it. Um, if The next one probably would be the, the Bulls. I was, as Jason mentioned, I was a huge Bulls fan when I was a kid because of the Michael Jordans and the Scotty Pippins. And um, so that, that's kind of been my, my sports player uh, all my life. Nathan, fellow Chiefs fan. 
Well, thank you, Tim. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Nathan. I'm the Senior Living Director in Ankeny. Uh, I see we have a few Ankeny people in the chat. Our tablet's going. Um, yeah, I am from Blue Springs City, right outside of Kansas City. So I treat my sports teams like family. You're born into them. You don't really get to choose. Uh, and so, you know, Matt, there was a time where Kansas City had really poor sports teams too. And then uh, 2014 happened and suddenly we're amazing at sports now, which is really crazy. Uh, yes, so it's been a very happy five years for me at being a Kansas City sports fan. I do love all sports, though. Uh, have a ridiculous ability to remember things that are not important when it comes to sports. So I'm um, kind of a steel trap on information for things like that. But I'll watch anything, tennis, golf, basketball, hockey, any of that. So sports is a big love of mine. And then, Jason, did we get to hear your teams? Yeah, it's, it doesn't surprise me that you don't remember them. But yes, I, I did talk about Try to teams. forget. And I, I'm, yeah, I'm okay with that. So, um, but thank you, Nathan. Yeah, uh, so we'll, we'll kind of leave it open now. Like I said, uh, we, we can definitely, if, if you guys want us to get the ball rolling, again, we can talk about our, uh, you know, childhood heroes or, you know, our childhood icons, I'll say, maybe not heroes, but icons of who we cheered for, who we watched. But we, we definitely wanted to learn more about you know, the generations and, and who you guys grew up watching and, you know, teach us young bucks, uh, you know, those, those players like that and how we can maybe converse on, on why um, and how you became a fan or, or started watching them. So if, uh, Kayla, I'm not sure how you run this. If we, it would be easier, we thought maybe to put it in the chat. If yeah. somebody wanted to chat on somebody or. Yeah, but I'm going to give Mandy Wilkes an opportunity to introduce herself. She's one of the biggest sports fans that I know as well. And Is I would probably- she a Chiefs fan? Well, let's just talk for a moment. Oh, I wanted to hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm an 80s girl, grew up in the 80s. My heart pumps Royals blue, but my veins bleed Cardinal red. How about that? Okay, so 80s, like George Brett, oh, heartthrob, Brett Saberhagen. Yeah, all of that. Like I was going to be George Brett. Like this is going to sound bad, people, but I wanted to grow up and be George Brett's trophy wife and breed athletic babies with him. Like, <laughs> thank you, Jason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so baseball, definitely number one. Um, I'm going to say definitely football is I'm a Chiefs girl. NBA, back in the 90s, the dream team. So anybody right there back in the 90s, that dream team basketball that went to the Olympics in 92. Dennis Rodman kind of had a special place in my heart. I know he's weird. Yeah, a little weird. But uh, Carl Malone, I feel like in John Stockton, like I can go back there. Um, not a super huge hockey fan like congratulations the blues won a few years ago I got to be a Missouri girl my I'm an alumni from Missouri State so go Bears and then of course I'm gonna have to say my favorite teams currently is anything that my 15 year old phenom daughter is playing on she is a five foot eleven left-handed pitcher throwing about 60 miles per hour and her changeups coming in at 38 if you know anything about softball that's killer. Um, and she also picked up volleyball a few years ago. It's pretty good there. And then basketball, she's just an ugly beast down below. So there you go. There's, there's my life in a nutshell. Sports. Day in and day out. And this COVID's killing me. That's perfect. Um, okay. So yeah, Jason. So I think that, or did you have something to say to Mandy or, okay. <laughs> no, no, I, I'll, I'll let that be. I don't know her well enough yet, but we'll get to learn it. We'll, we'll learn more about each other and then I'll, then we'll have those conversations, but it's okay for now. But that dream team, I did maybe, maybe something we can talk about. Cause that from the last dance, the interesting thing I always that I uh, wanted to learn about was the Isaiah Thomas and not being on that team and Matt being a Detroit guy that maybe what he would have some thoughts on that, but we'll continue. I said, uh, we'll, we'll see whatever. Anybody I have it all taped. I haven't watched it yet. 
It's all okay. it's all recorded for me to watch. It's, I haven't it's watched good. it yet. All right. Okay. So yeah, Jason, it's probably, I mean, if they can come off mute and just as a quick reminder, um, at the bottom of your screen, there's a little, if you're on your tablet, you can probably just see it or just tap your picture or tap, tap your, tap your screen and you should have a little mute and unmute microphone that comes up at the bottom of your screen. Again, if there's a line through it, a red line through it, that means we cannot hear you. And if you tap that little microphone and the little line goes away, that means we can hear you. And that's the same way with that little camcorder right next to your um, uh, little microphone. Too. If there's a line through it, that means we can't see it or can't see you. Um, if there is not a line through it, which it looks like all the residents, they're hiding their faces right now. Um, that means we can, uh, cannot see you. So um, if you want to um, just type in the chat, there should be a little um looks like a little like in cartoons it has a like a bubble above your head that's kind of what it looks like um, if you click that you can type in um anything you want to say in the little chat button or um bubble and then we'll see that um or if you just want to come off mute and join in the conversation that would be great so does anyone have any favorite sports teams Oh, Cassie's got a question for you guys. She said, who is your all-time favorite player? Pick your sport and why. I think Cassie, Cassie should go first. And she's silent. <laughs> I'll go first. I'll start it off. So... With uh, me being a big Cardinals fan, like Ozzie Smith was my guy back in the day. Um, I played shortstop and first base, and so I, I wanted to do the backflip just like he did all the time. So uh, that, that's my guy for baseball. Ozzie Smith was my, uh, my favorite player in baseball. Um, for football, oh, man, there's so many. Um, but... I would probably have to say Michael Irvin um, just because I was a receiver as well. And so he kind of, uh, he's kind of who I looked up to and wanted to be like um, for basketball. I've always been a Jordan fan, um, but a little after Jordan, I was a big Kevin Garnett fan. Um, even though he played for the Timberwolves, uh, whenever he went to the Celtics, I was, I was really happy there. Um, because I'm, I'm a Celtics fan, uh, but, uh, I mean, whenever he went to the Celtics, that just made everything 10 times better. So then he got his championship and was able to sail off into the sunset. Um, those are really the three uh, sports that I pay the most attention to. Like, I don't know uh, too much about the Blues, but uh, O'Neill seemed to be uh, one that was, uh, or I guess O'Reilly. Um, seemed to be one that was really good in the playoffs whenever I started watching them. Um, so, I mean, I would probably gravitate towards him uh, for hockey. And I don't really watch uh, golf or tennis much, so I can't really give you any names there, but I'll pass it on. Um, Hudson, uh, Sheila from Hudson Grand said Joe Lewis. Does anyone... Sure. So Joe Does Lewis, yes. Joe, Joe Lewis, Lewis is a boxer. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Sheila, I don't know if you are able to come on, but if you are able to come on and share if uh, any of the big uh, matches that he had, um, does anybody Do you want to talk about Joe Lewis? <sighs> I unmuted you, so you, you should be able to, we should be able to hear you now. I think we're being shy. <laughs> Okay, that's okay. <laughs> so does, does anybody on this panel remember who Joe Lewis, his biggest fights would have been against? I, I do know who Joe Lewis was, but I can't for the life of me remember who his biggest fights would have been against. <laughs> See, this is, <laughs> this is the problem when you get all these. We, we, I, I just Googled it because so, I don't know. <laughs> so we're going to use technology to get us, get us through it. Um, 
he was he competed from 34 to 51 and he resigned as a world champion from 39 to 49 or 37 to 49 he held the title and of course the red wings old arena the hockey arena was the joe lewis arena and they just changed it so i was sad about that the joe it was iconic so was he from Michigan then, or the Detroit area? From Alabama. So why do we name it the Joe? That is a good question. <laughs> we can maybe bring that up. We can maybe bring that up on trivia. We can we can talk about tri- involving this into trivia, right? So. Um, Okay, so if, if uh, nobody else, I know Matt joined with his screen on. So do we want to yeah, maybe Joe did grow up in Detroit? That's why it was named that way. Okay, so he grew up in Detroit, born in Alabama, raised in Detroit. All right. So Matt, I saw you joined with your video. Do you want to share a little bit about uh, who your favorite player is? Maybe pick a sport and go from there, and then we'll keep it. Yeah, I'll um, I'll do uh, baseball again. Uh, my favorite. Uh, athlete was Greg Maddox. So that was someone as a kid growing up in like the mid nineties. I mean, the Braves were always on TBS. So I always got to watch him pitch. I mean, him, Glavin, Smoltz, you know, Mark Wollers, John Rocker, all those guys were just incredible. And uh, I'll never forget getting the sports illustrated for kids. And it had his pressure points of how he would hold his pitches. And me and my brother would go in the backyard and we'd play catch back and forth. And Oh, it was just, it was just incredible. And just getting him to watch, just watch him play for like the Dodgers and Padres towards the end of his career and the Cubs again. It was just, I mean, he still had it and it's just, it was awesome to actually experience that and just watch him just maneuver a game. And it was like a game of chess for him. It was incredible. And where are you from? I'm from Northern Illinois, Rockford, Illinois, but I'm, I'm in uh, University City, Missouri now at Kingsland Walk. So yeah, I, I uh, I'm about an hour where where I'm from. I was about an hour from Wrigley, about an hour and a half from from the cell, which I don't know what it's called now. Um, and then uh, about an hour from uh, Miller Park. So, and I didn't care for any of them. I was a Brace fan, Brace fan through and through. And uh, now being in St. Louis, you know, just getting a chance to watch the Cardinals, it's pretty. That's fun too. I'm just a big baseball fan. I, I don't really follow the Braves much anymore, but uh, just just as a kid, you just always remember those things. With all those tips, uh, how's your how's your slider? Uh, well, <laughs> I was fortunate enough to play a little bit after college and and uh, professionally, so that was fun. Um, I was a sinker slider kind of guy, so that was fun. Keep the ball low, right? Right. Ground Wait, ball in the college. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you go to college? Uh, St. Joseph's College. Uh, it's a Division II school. It was in the uh, GLVC. So they would play uh, UMSL, RALA, okay. um, which is now S&T, uh-huh. uh, Ro- Rockhurst, that conference. Which they're in a totally different conference now. Yeah. Yeah, they actually have, which one? Uh, RALA, S&T. Yes. They're with yeah. like Northwest and Central Missouri State. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this Missouri would have been... Southern. This would have been back in like 08, 09, 07, somewhere in there. All right. Well, thanks, Matt. I do remember some of those old Braves teams. If I remember names like Sid Bream, those oh, yeah. days when they used to play the Twins back in the day. Like, I don't remember all of them, but I remember, again, because growing up, I rooted against the Twins. So, of course, I think I was cheering for the Braves, you know, during, during some of those, those games. So, um, Cassie, I'll jump off that. Cassie brought up the question – what was the, du- the duration of the longest playoff drought in history? Uh, you may be thinking about the Kansas City Chiefs, Cassie, but I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just can't stop stabbing those guys. I know they have a Super Bowl now, but I just got to keep giving it to those Chiefs fans. I apologize. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to think of – I know um, – I think I heard something like the Bengals during this last draft have gone 29 years – without making like without winning a playoff game which probably isn't the longest time but still I thought that was a crazy stat and how long they've gone without winning a playoff game um does anybody else know longest playoff droughts hey google uh yeah. <laughs> hey here we got another google guy yeah we got another google 
So um, this was from January 2020. It was recent. It says, instead, uh, following another disappointing 6-10 and 10 campaign, the Browns have etched their name into the record books, tying the Bills uh, for most seasons between playoff bursts, which is 17. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm wondering if Cassie brought that up for our Ohio fans. I hope I'm not. I know. Oh, she says 44 years. So she's Googling too, I think, because we gave her a chance to talk about her favorite sports team and she didn't jump on. So what, what sport, Cassie, if, you're, if you can type it in there, what sport are we looking at for 44 years? Does anybody have any guesses? It's not the Royals, right? There's another stab for Mandy Cardinal. and Nathan. The Arizona, Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals. Well, Google let me down. Who job, were Cassie. also the St. Louis Cardinals up for a time hmm? in football. Jake Plummer led him to that playoff, uh, yeah. that playoff clincher, 98. Jake the Snake. Hey, there we go. Jake the Snake. All right. Cassie chiming in there with some playoff tri- or with some trivia. Huh. Um so, yeah, I, I'll kind of go off of Matt said. I'll just pick one uh, basketball. And I was talking about them with the guys before we jumped on here that some of um, the residents and, and people joining us might know. Uh, Pistol Pete Maravich, uh, basketball player. For those, I'm sure that, uh, you know, some may know if you follow basketball, but uh, was a documentary I remember watching as a young kid that just fascinated me and, you know, the amount of basketball and how he played in a generation – and changed kind of a generation of basketball and how it was played. So I would say if I had a favorite player in a favorite sport, which basketball was my favorite sport, and I was lucky enough to play in college as well, that uh, Pistol Pete Maravich was uh, was my guy at that time. I remember that documentary, if you guys remember seeing, where he spun a basketball on his finger for hours, I think, and walking to and from and just lived with that ball in his hand. And so uh, one of my favorite players. So uh, we'll we'll continue on too, but we Cassie's got another one of who is the highest paid player in terms of annual salary in the NFL history. Uh, I can chime in and say it's about to be Patrick Mahomes, but I don't know if he has signed that contract yet. If he hasn't, uh, it's going to be. So I'll give the Chiefs fans that they have that guy. Um, as of right now, I think it was just recently done, right? Like if it had to be I in think, this last I, last offseason. I believe, yeah, I think it's Russell Wilson. That's yeah, I think I it's Russell say. Wilson too because. Yeah, right. uh, Cassie. Were they right? Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Oh, I forgot about old Aaron. When it Who comes to annual Aaron salary, Rogers. and if any of you are Packers fans and football fans, you probably just saw during the draft that they picked a quarterback in the first round, which means Aaron Rodgers is on his way out of Green Bad Bay, face, which makes Aaron a lot Rogers. of Minnesota fans happy, which, again, I'm not a Vikings fan, but uh, what does it say here? He agreed to a four-year, 134, just a small contract, uh, with only $34 million a year on top of the $58 million signing bonus. That's a heck of a bonus, right? Oh, he's going to get 160 million. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll take a stab at I favorite show, player. We were talking about that. Hold on a second, Tim. I show Russell Wilson makes $35 million a year. What did Uh-oh. you say? That? Cassie yeah. might have outdated information. I think so. So we were right, Tim. I thought it was Wilson. He was the last one to sign a big contract, so he had to be the highest paid. Cassie, they weren't going to let you have that one. Nope. Uh, I'll take a stab at favorite player. Um you know, he may not have been the greatest at the sports, but he was one of my favorite players, uh, and that was Bo Jackson. Um, you know, Bo Stone Jackson man, was – Oh, I'm sorry, Nathan. You know, he, he lit it up for the Raiders as a football player, and then for my Kansas City Royals, um, you know, I, I was very fortunate. Um, for those of you that may have followed Bo Jackson, there was a Yankees game – one year that he hit three consecutive home runs, three at bats, three home runs. And then he was diving for a ball in center field and got injured. So he didn't come up for his fourth at bat. And so he was on injured reserve for, I don't know, three or four weeks. I think when he came back, his first game to coming back, um, I was at the game in Kansas city. Uh, a friend of mine, my parents had taken uh, us up to this game and so we snuck down to front row to take – that was back when 
the ushers didn't care where you went to take a picture, especially if you were a kid. And so we snuck down to, to the front row and Bo came up for his first at bat and, and I had an old time camera and, and I'm taking the picture. I get the picture in mid swing and he hits another home run out on his first swing back from, from being on injured reserve. So, uh, I mean, I was like a kid in a candy store. Of course I was, you know, 50 feet from him at the time, but then hitting that home run, that was, uh, like I said, from, from one of my favorite players watching him in college and then uh, in the majors, uh, both football and baseball, I loved it. I had the poster of him. Now, mind you, I was a young little girl with a poster of an African-American in my bedroom. But it was the, the um, black and blue. So half of it was the Royals and half of it was the Raiders. Like, yeah, Bo Jackson. That's a heartthrob. Now, if any of you are still following Bo, now he's big into bicycling. In Alabama, he's, he's a chef, and he does a lot of bicycling fundraisers for inner city kids and things like that. He does uh, – it's Bikes with Bo or – yeah, I think Bikes with Bo, and he does like a 40-mile bike ride a couple of times a year, and they fundraise and, and donate that back to, to inner city kids in, in the Alabama area, and I think throughout the country, so pretty neat. He also does lots of the softball alumni games, like at um, Kauffman Stadium. Like they'll go do softball games there. Matt Laporte, how about you? There's a few. I mean, I had a lot to pick from being from Michigan. I'd, our teams were awful, but we had some great, some great individuals come through. <laughs> you know, going going to the football side. Uh, I'd, I'll always, I'll always love Barry Sanders. I mean, the team was awful, but we had a family tradition in my house that we would, uh, we would go to the, the Thanksgiving football game. So every Thanksgiving, we go to the Silver Dome and and play the Bears and get our teeth kicked in. But Barry Sanders was always, always fun to watch. You know, yeah, legendary. Definitely not the Patriots, says Nathan. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I saw Cassie's question, and I, I was going to let these other gentlemen take this because I know one of them definitely okay. knows the answer, and I don't know if Cassie did this one to me on purpose or if she just <laughs> happened to take an unexpected <laughs> jab at all of us Patriots fans because we, we it coach, is definitely not the Patriots. <laughs> yeah, okay. Including okay. the Super Bowls is very important her know. Uh-huh. Yeah. that question. Yeah, yeah, only yeah. one so, team that to, to, can claim that we there is one. only one team, and if I'm if my my memory Mary serves me correctly, to get the year right, it is the 1972 Miami Dolphins. Bob Greasy, right? Is, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I think that is uh, that is the only team to go undefeated through the Super Bowl. There have been two teams to go undefeated in the regular season, and New England is a part of that group, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah they are, but I they did not when they lost. Number, didn't they? they lost in the Super Bowl to the New York Giants, twenty-one to seventeen. Mario Manningham was the final score of that game. Nope, that wasn't Mario Manningham. That was David Tyree. Manningham was the second. Oh, no, Manningham had that catch. That was the helmet catch. That, that was That's the, the second one. David Tyree. Yeah. David Tyree was the one who caught the helmet catch oh, in the Super Bowl. Eli Manning threw up a prayer, yeah. And then Plaxico, yeah. Plaxico Burris caught the touchdown pass on Ellis Hobbs. So Manning yeah, him so was the second. The Patriots time. fans took that one pretty hard. So yep. the Dolphins, we'll stop talking uh, about that one now. Dolphins Cassie, pop, please bring up champagne. a different question. Yeah, Dolphins pop yeah. champagne every year when the last NFL team goes down. They do. And sadly, the head coach of that team, Don Shula, passed away this week. And yes, so – uh, I know um, some of our listeners might know him a lot better than we do, but I do remember uh, Don Shula was the most winningest coach in NFL history as well, but uh, passed away this past week, uh, Monday or Sunday, uh, one of those days, uh, sadly passed away. So, yeah, the NFL world lost lost a good one there, and I do remember hearing that they pop champagne every single year. Uh, like, is there a Morris that was a receiver or something was always mm-hmm. pretty vocal Mercury about it Morris. and celebrating Mercury when teams Morris. lost Mercury Morris. There we go. Yep. Um, Dustin says, is there a player who is better than Jordan? That is a good topic. Uh, controversial. Um, Ooh, who's the only athlete ever to play in a Super Bowl and a world series. I know that one. I do too. Is that, is that neon? Nathan. Neon Dion. 
Yeah. Neon Deion Sanders. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So we had a couple people that knew that. Let's, let's, uh, let's go to Dustin since it's controversial. And if anybody else wants to chime in, um, I'm going to say no. I grew up in that generation that watched Michael Jordan. I'm watching this last dance as far as when it came to uh, the ultimate competitor, the ultimate, I mean, he was a defender. He played, you know, he played offense. He played defense. He was a leader. Uh, maybe not the way maybe all leaders should be, at least watching this last dance and how, how he did that. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to say Jordan, Jordan was my guy. There hasn't been anybody better since. Uh, and again, I don't know that older generation. So uh, if anybody from the communities are there and they want to throw somebody up there, we can maybe look into it. But I know Bill Russell's of the world, the Wilt Chamberlain's, uh, you know, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird. Larry Bird was a good, like, there are some good ones out there. Uh, Oscar Robertson, didn't he average a triple-double for his career, right? Oscar, the big O, I believe, uh, you know, averaged a triple-double for his career. Uh, Dr. J, uh, there's a lot of good ones. So if anybody's got anybody out there that they feel is better than Jordan, even the panel up here, I'd like to hear it. Nobody. So every, at least everybody in the panel <laughs> is in, a, in agreement. That I will say something. I argument every time I, I get in a discussion about this, I do believe that most likely Michael Jordan was the best basketball player, but I'm a young and a millennial and LeBron James, I think is the greatest athlete that's ever played basketball because he's basically like he'd be created in a lab. He's just unbelievable. dominant. But for, watching for, watching The Last Dance, and I, I caught the very tail end of Jordan. I, he was just dominant and did the best. Like, whenever you watch Jordan play, it looks like he's flying, like he's, like, soaring through the air, as opposed to when you watch LeBron, it's just like he's barreling through and just dominating people. But So it's how you look he, at it. He is a bulldozer. And, and I swear I thought Kayla muted you there for, for a second when you went on mute in the middle there. I was like, congratulations, good job, Kayla. As soon as he said LeBron, she just shut him down. I was like, way to go, but never mind. You may have done that to yourself. Uh, yeah, we get that argument a lot. Dustin, it looked like you had something to say too, so I'll let you go. Well, I was just going to talk to Nathan. Like, So you think LeBron is better than Kobe Bryant? Um, so, I mean, Jordan, it sounds like, is the overall consensus for everybody. Um, so, I mean, we could... From the panel, at least. I think maybe right. some of our residents might have some ideas, but maybe they'll chime in. Yep. So maybe a little bit easier one would be like Kobe versus LeBron. Uh, and maybe there'll be more competition between the two of those since you're not comparing Jordan um, to anybody. So why would uh, I would challenge Kobe versus LeBron since they're pretty new um, for both of them. And most of us have probably seen them play. Tim, you're off mute. Did you have something? Oh, no. Um, I, I would say from a – again, and I I mean, I, I don't follow basketball, but I follow sports in, in general. And from my um, non-statistical uh, standpoint, I would – I think that Kobe, in my opinion – only because he stayed with the Lakers. Lamar or LeBron has bounced around um, to kind of create his team. Obviously, Kobe had a lot of influence in creating the team that he had. Um, but I think from an all-around natural talent, um, again, LeBron is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Um, but but I would take Kobe over over LeBron. Nathan looks like he's just ready to chomp at the bit and say something. So I just, yeah. just because I want to if eat LeBron at Nathan a little bit more. Shots a game, he would score I say Kobe Bryant too, Nathan. What'd you say? I said, just, just so you can keep going and you get a little bit more cronery. I say Kobe Bryant too. Uh, I think Kobe Bryant is a better leader uh, than, than LeBron is. I, I get LeBron. I get while he's really, 
The guy is 6'8", 300 pounds, okay? You're right. He is a freak of nature when it comes to if you're going to build somebody in a laboratory, that's who you build. Like, could you guys imagine being 6'8", 300 pounds and moving like you're 5'10", which I'm 5'10", by the way. That's why I bring up that height. That is still tall, people. That is still tall. But no, being 6'8", and moving like he does at 300 pounds is something that is just, you don't see it very often. Um, but I'm, I'm going to be that, that old generation now, Nathan, when I say I'm used to, uh, Jordan getting laid out or even Kobe back in the, they just played more physical nowadays. You put a hand on somebody and not only is it a foul, he'll fall over LeBron's six, eight, 300 pounds. And somebody touches him with a finger and he falls over. Like somebody just shot him with a shotgun. Like it's just, I don't know to me, generationally, that's going to be that old person to me coming out and saying, I just don't feel they play the game the same way. And that's why I feel Jordan and Kobe, that older generation, they, just, they had more to go through. And that last dance, when Kobe came into that all-star game, as kind of those older guys were going out, and the way they were talking about Kobe and how they were going to give it to him and put it on him, that's just uh, that's good basketball right there. I think you're saying like the style of basketball has changed, like from the Jordan air to current, like the style of basketball has changed so much. Now it's like NBA. I don't like to watch a whole lot because it's just like, it's just go down and jack up a ball. It's not running plays. It's not doing anything else. It's like, go, go down, jack up the ball or take it to the hole. That's what they're doing. Back in the day, you ran some plays. I mean, like you soared through there, you did the fancy stuff, but even way back, like go back to the generations, there was no three point line. So when you're looking at stats, no, I mean, no three point lines. I mean, like a totally different ball game. Do I get to defend LeBron now? Okay. My thing is you can, ch- you can chalk it all up to the like Mike era. Like I remember being a kid and Michael Jordan was taught as the greatest athlete. Every kid wanted to be like Mike. So with that, you go back 15 years, every single like top tier athlete wanted to be a basketball player. And I think you see that now by the crop of NBA talent that's playing the game, not just from a domestic, but from an international side with the Giannis's and like what Dirk Nowitzki did. And so LeBron has had to play against the like greatest crop of athletes ever gathered and put on a field or court and he has dominated it he went to seven straight nba finals something like that and that's something that kobe didn't do and kobe won because he had shaq and then when shaq left he had gasol like absolutely a dominant second force when lebron had a dominant starting team they won the finals every single year so I think the feat of how good LeBron is is puts him on that level because he's had to go against the best crop. Michael, when he came in the league, was going against Larry Bird and Michael the Magic whenever they were old and no one had really shown up yet. And then whenever he was about to retire, Kobe was 19. So he didn't really have a peer, not like LeBron who has like 15 peers. I'm going to suck it up, Andy. I'm going to second Mandy's point here. LeBron's playing two-hand touch. He wasn't going up against guys like Rodman. All right? They played some ball. Charles back in Barkley. Charles Throwing Barkley. Bodies. Charles Barkley is <laughs> six foot eight. <laughs> he was a little bulldog. I am almost as tall as Charles uh, Barkley. Like, ooh. No. It's Watch easy to play ball. with those guys. Not seven footers like that are 300 pounds, like monsters. What about Bill Lambeer? John Sally? Those old Pistons bad boys, the Pistons, right? They, they were they were the bad I mean, boys. They may not have been seven feet tall, but they were big guys that were going to put people on their backside if they came down to the the lane. I, I've never heard, uh, and again, maybe we will in a documentary years down the road. Uh, LeBron rules, unless it's the officials saying, "Well, we'll let him travel and walk the ball up the court until he gets to where he wants to be, and then he can just bulldoze his way." But I'm pretty sure Jordan had some rules set against him by teams. If they just weren't going to let him get to the hole. And I know we're not talking about Jordan. I, got I also off the- know that Michael Jordan got every single call on him as well. He And they would call it Jordan rules as opposed to the, if you watch the documentary, that you get the whistle blown on Jordan every single time. Like that shot in game six that, where that, Dubs Byron Russell. That could be. That could be. The, the one point I wanted to go back on when you said Kobe didn't have any peers, what about Tim Duncan? Like I know you're not going to have these guys. Like And again, one – 
it's because Tim Duncan ran like, you know, with the Spurs and like they just, they ran it for a while that it was theirs. And I would also disagree that you said LeBron didn't have to go like, so the, the Miami, we're not going to win one. We're not going to win two. We're not going to win three. We're not going to win four. What happened there? How many did Miami win? They won all of them and then they left. Then they disbanded. They won all of them. They played together for three years and they won two, right? Yeah. So that's not all of them. That's close. You're already wrong. You said all of them. Two out of three isn't all of them. What about Ray Allen? Did did LeBron win that one, or do you think Ray Allen? Won? I can't say that because you got John Paxson, you got Steve Curry. They won a couple games for Jordan too, so I, I won't stick to that argument. But anybody else want to chime in on? I just think you know you're going with LeBron whenever he had only one supporting cast like you know Kobe or you know anybody like that like he had Shaq yes uh, but like to what Mandy said like they were actually running plays like Carl Malone and John Stockton they had the pick and roll like with the with Kobe and Shaq they had the triangle offense that they brought over from the Bulls like and now it's just you isolate and then you either drive in or you pass it and you know they shoot a three shoot a three Uh, all day three 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 so i mean with that like kobe only had one person really as a supporting cast and anytime lebron has won the championship like he's had multiple like two three people to support him it wasn't just him and somebody else it was multiple people on the starting lineup so to really just robert ori over there dustin <laughs> yeah, I am. But uh, I mean, he was there as a supporting cast to Shaq and Kobe. So I mean, he wasn't the main focal point for that offense. It was Kobe and it was Shaq. And with LeBron, like, and I would also argue like the the clutch performance, like for Kobe and Shaq, if if it came down to the last shot, Kobe was taking that shot. If it's LeBron, LeBron's passing that to whoever's open because. I don't think that he has the ability to to finish, and so I don't know that he has the confidence to to take that shot in the, the might, remaining seconds. He might be triple team too, though, so he might have to pass. I can show you some sick buzzer beaters by LeBron in the playoffs. LeBron will never beat Jordan, so call me oh, when LeBron has six championships. We should just call the Zoom call. Everybody, I, I, I like Corey. Co- Corey coming in from right field. Yeah. Corey, we already we already determined that one. That's why we had to do Kobe and LeBron because we we already kind of determined that Jordan's in his own class. Um, but yeah, I do like Corey coming in from from right field. He's he's definitely right. I'm not going to argue that point. I, for, I forgot um, this was today, and I was like, oh, sports talk. I was like, I love sports. <laughs> well, as it turns out, it's getting up on Nathan talk <laughs> it LeBron is like, it's Nathan amazing. was that one he guy is LeBron is the most athletic p- person to ever play in the NBA I'll give him that okay, the most Corey. dominant when it comes to physical ability so Corey who's your who's your guy Kobe or LeBron oh it's Kobe all day being from California black, the black mamba like mamba mentality I will not lose right now I will not lose and he's got five championships. So, I mean, he did have O'Neill for three of them, Pau Gasol and Andrew Bynum for the other two. But still, I mean, all these other guys have had tons of players too. So, it's okay. You, you must be a L.A. fan if you brought up Andrew Bynum being a big part of that team. I mean, he, he was a big guy, but – I mean, he helped. <laughs> I'm just he helped. messing with the He helped. I'm just upset that the Lakers lost with Gary Payton, Carl Malone, Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant, and they got they lost four one to the Detroit Pistons in two thousand and four, like in the NBA Finals. That was a that special Cha- team. Cha- Chauncey Billups, Ben Wallace, Rip yeah. Hamilton, Wallace, right? Is that those guys? That was a special yeah. team. Yeah, they, they had they had no too. business winning. All right, so I think we got past. I think uh, Kobe won that one. Sorry, Nathan. Even though you guys can still have your own thoughts, I still appreciate that. But we'll, we'll say Kobe won opinion. that round. All right, so I, th- this one I'm going to have to probably sit out on. But since Dustin brought that up, I'm going to do it again because I think this one could be more of a generation. And, again, 
for those residents that are out there listening in, if you guys want to want to enter it into the chat, maybe we can talk about it because uh, they might know this one. I'm just going to throw this out there, guys. You might know which direction I'm going. Greatest quarterback in NFL history is question mark. And I'll just – I'll take responses. I'll, I'll take uh, – you guys go first. I'll start it off because I'm pretty passionate about Peyton Manning. I I think that Peyton Manning is probably the best quarterback of all time. I think Dan Marino is definitely up there. I feel really bad that he didn't win a championship. Um, but I think Peyton Manning overall, like his ability to read defenses, his ability to like lead on the field and be a coach on the field. Um, to pretty much do everything. And like, I don't think there was another, I don't think there's ever been a quarterback to do that. And there may never be a quarterback to ever do that. And so I know that Jason, you want Tom Brady, but I think that he was surrounded by a lot more than what Peyton Manning was surrounded by. And Peyton Manning was there every year. (laughs) So definitely the smartest quarterback. I agree with that. Peyton Manning is, um, Tom Brady definitely had the coaching to help um, get him, you know, six championships. But it's got to be Montana, right? Joe Montana. I just love the fact that I, I didn't even have to bring Brady up, and you guys are already talking about him. So, yeah, just keep keep going. Let's hear it. I mean, you got Montana, you got Brady, you got Marino, you got Manning, you got the other man. I'm just kidding. Troy. <laughs> Troy. Troy. Troy, Stop Troy Aikman, you had yeah. Michael yeah. Irvin, Emmett Snake. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to go old school too because I don't know enough enough about the NFL history. Like I'm, I'm googling Johnny Unitas right now to see how he holds up. Bar you know? Star, like there's so many guys back in the day, like they were amazing. Terry Bradshaw, he won four. Tim Mahomes. I was about to say, what about Patty? Yeah. What about Patty Mahomes? All right, he's Caleb, the, Caleb, he's if the you're next still, greatest quarterback. If you're still there, you can mute now. Now he's we're a, getting crazy. Sides call away from being two for two and having two Super Bowls. Yeah, he's just we getting started. He's, he's going to be at the. He'll, he'll be on the list. But we don't talk about D Ford. We don't talk. We don't say his name. <laughs> All right. Well, throw I'm in. going to have to respond. I'm going to respectfully not agree with any of you guys. And I am going to say Brady is the best. I got, I, if I have to lay it out there, six championships says something. We talked about Jordan, right? That clutch gene. Like I get it. Coaching gets you a lot of places, but when you put the players on the field, guess who's got it? Guess who's got to compete? Not always the coaches. It's the players. And Dustin, your whole, not as many people around him. I 100% disagree with that. Now, if you're talking coaches, absolutely. But if you're telling me Brady has had a receiver other than the year with Moss where he had 50 touchdowns, that he had one better than Reggie Wayne and Marvin Harrison, I'll wait. Okay, I'll wait on that. I was, say coming, Edelman's I was better. coming to your like, aid there, Jason. You were going to come to my aid there because I'm di- Edron James was a good running back. Dallas Clark was a good tight end. Peyton Brandon Manning Shockley. had weapons, but I'll, I'll give it to him. What Peyton Manning didn't have was the defense to help with the full team. I get that. I will give them that argument, but to still to lose to the saints like they did in that super bowl. Ooh, we got, we got to put a little, little dock on the, on the, you know, check mark there. Cause Brady uh, had people around him, right? Yeah. How many people, had, how many years? He had Adam Vinatieri. <laughs> no, Adam Vinatieri. Oh, yeah. That's the person That's he right. had around. That's oh, all you need. So did Peyton, Ma- so did Peyton Manning. <laughs> there you, go. you forget. He, he went to Indianapolis after new England. Remember? That's 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 I believe the real he actually won right a Super there. Bowl with Peyton Manning in Indianapolis. Right that's there, the exactly. Goal. I think he's right. Adam Vinatieri is the real goat. He's won no, them Jason, all. But uh, I, no, I, I'm I'm with you, Montana. Oh, go. No, I was going to actually agree with you, Jason, because you're two fourth quarter drives away from Tom Brady being eight and zero in Super Bowls, and he didn't. Yeah, he had he was thrown to Dion Branch and James White's and Kevin Fox. You, you're and, forgetting one nine and zero. He did fumble in that Eagles game, though, so I'm not going to give him that one. We lost, Brady lost three Super Bowls, but you're right. Uh, that one, I'll have to say he lost that, he lost that fumble. So that one would have to be more on him. 
But yes, he took the lead in two fourth quarters against the Giants both times. And our defense, you know, lost it. But just like that, against the Seahawks, our defense won it. Malcolm Butler won that Super Bowl. You know, yes, Brady brought him back, but without that pick, we lose that. You know, give the ball give the ball to Marshawn Lynch, right? And the Seahawks win that Super Bowl. I yeah, would agree Wilson with that. Won. Wilson lost yeah, it. I, yeah, I would uh, yeah, Wilson lost that one, I would say. So, um, but I would, uh, Corey's Montana, that, that to me, I would say they are uh, 1A and 1B. Uh, Joe, from what he, again, though, you think about what Joe had. You have Jerry Rice, the best receiver of all time. You had uh, Bill Walsh, probably the best offensive mind at that time. For those that know that generation, that West Coast offense that he brought to football was a game changer at that time. Nobody had seen anything like that. So, I mean, I give Joe all the credit in the world. Four for four, for four in Super Bowl. I think what, he had three of those MVPs, or was he all four or three maybe? Was I right? Whatever he is there, like, absolutely. And, um, you know, coming from Notre Dame, of course, he wasn't going to be selected to be, you know, the best quarterback there was. And here he was coming out of nowhere. And so um, I, I would I would disagree with Dust. I'd be leaning more towards Corey's Montana than I would Peyton. But I'll – so what you're saying is that Reggie Wayne and Marvin Harrison were superior talents. It wasn't Peyton Manning that got them to that point. They came out of college like the number one or two wide receivers in the draft. Reggie Wayne was. I don't know enough about Marvin Harrison, but I know Reggie Wayne went in the first round out of Miami. I knew him. Like I actually followed him in college. He was really good. I don't was, know about Marvin Harrison. You guys can fill me in on him, but – Reggie Wayne was a legit wide receiver coming out of college. Because I'm pretty sure Peyton Manning did the same thing in Denver to the receivers that he had there, too. Mary so we'll see. Is the first round we'll receiver see this out of Georgia year Tech. If, yeah. So we'll see if, uh, if Tom Brady can do it with some other rec- – well, I mean, he's got like two of the top receivers – in the he league, he has right all now. the talent the in the world. Yeah. He's the best talent that he's ever had. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Harrison was a 19th pick. I would agree round. with you there. Well, then Montana had Jerry Rice out of Mississippi say? Valley State. Like yeah. Harrison was a number one pick, the 19th, 19th pick in the first in the first round. Okay, so, so just a couple weapons drafted in the first round. I'm just messing with you, Dustin. Uh, so Jason does. Is your there anybody follow? else, Mandy? Who is who is your quarterback? I, I said Troy Aikman, but once again, I go back to like that was the '90s, the early '90s. The Cowboys were dominating. Young girl, he's he hot, was dreamy. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We're moving on there, Jason. I want to know: Are you going to follow him? Is your heart following your guy? Uh, it is. It is not. I'm a Patriots fan, and I will, I will remain a Patriots okay. fan. But I can tell you, I will You'll cheer for the Bucs when they're not playing. Well, yeah, when they're not playing the Patriots, I will cheer for the Bucs, especially when they play Kansas City if they do, or I think you guys are saying they play the Raiders or whatever it is. But I will definitely cheer for them. But I can tell you, if the two teams played, I am, I am a Patriots fan. Because I was actually before Brady came along. I uh, 95 was when I started following the Patriots and I can tell you the story and I won't make it too long, but literally the Patriots were playing the Vikings in the last game of the year and the Patriots weren't good. I think we were like four and 11 or four and 12 at the time, but the Vikings were one game away from making the playoffs. And if they would have beat us, they would have gone to the playoffs and drew Bledsoe his rookie year threw a touchdown pass to Ben Coates in the back left of the end zone, I can tell you, I can visualize it like it was yesterday. And I watched my dad and my brother break down and just scream and cry because this was at the end of the game. And I'm jumping up and down going, yes. And this wasn't even my team at the time, but that's, that's when they became my team. And so, uh, yeah, so ever since 95. So I remember the bad years. We did have a good year against Green Bay in there with Bledsoe. So I honestly was against, like when they wanted to start Tom Brady in that Super Bowl or even in the playoffs when Bledsoe was healthy, I can tell you, I was screaming at like, why? Like, Bledsoe's our guy. Why? And of course, 20 years later, Belichick made the right call. I feel bad for Bledsoe, though, because he lost his job to two quarterbacks. He lost it to Tom Brady and uh, what's Tony his Romo. name? Tony Romo. Yeah, Tony Romo. Yeah. Um, but I had to <laughs> oh, say, that's Tom right, because he was in Dallas. I, yeah. Yeah. Tom Brady was actually scared so much of Patrick Mahomes. He had, he had to leave the conference and go to the NFC instead, so. (laughs) 
That's right, because he, he, he never beat Mahomes when it he never beat Mahomes when it mattered, right? Hey, the 142.2 Monday Night Football. See, Corey, if you're gonna throw Montana in there, you've got to throw like Roger Staubach and Terry Bradshaw in the the same realm as Montana. I just can't I'm, think of Terry Bradshaw as a good quarterback because I see him on TV. I'm like, this guy's a fool. I don't know how he played football. He must just be football smart because he, I just I can't deal with him sometimes. He's hilarious. I don't though, know so. if Bradshaw really – I don't know that he was a really good quarterback. I think he was supported by the Steelers' defense whenever they won their, their four Super Bowls. But Staubach, like, he brought the Cowboys. Like, it was Montana and Staubach like fighting back and forth back in the day in the eighties, whenever the 49ers were big, but like and then Troy Aikman took over and the Cowboys just surpassed the 49ers altogether. But so I, I want to do one more for the Chiefs fans before we leave. And I'm going to bring up, so I'm going to bring up an old schooler and we got a new schooler. And I think they're, they're more similar. Dan Marino, Patrick Mahomes, more physically gifted for – again, you got to think era that they're playing in. What would Marino have done in this era that we're doing now? If I can to think of two arms – when it comes to arms and most gifted, I think Marino and I think Mahomes. Chiefs fans, what do you think? I just wish Mahomes was an Ace Ventura because then he would definitely take the cake. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I remember Marino growing up, and I know he just kind of got a short in the stick of not winning a Super Bowl. It's just Mahomes' just legacy is yet to be written. And I don't – there's this show on HBO. It's called Barbershop. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's LeBron James, my guy, apparently. Uh, he has all these athletes and actors come in. And then Mahomes, in during the conversation, said that he didn't learn how to read defenses until halfway through last season which just tells me that he's just been going off of in the moment, like spontaneous impulsive decisions. And that should be terrifying to like every other team in the league that he's still learning, still improving, still getting better. And he was hurt for half of last season. And so like, obviously who knows, but I would take Mahomes any day of the week and let's see how good he is. Yeah. I mean, Mahomes I think it's actually good. No no bias there I, I, or anything. I could definitely is a different era, you know, but, um, you know, I followed Mahomes back even when he was at Texas tech, my, my wife's uncle is a Texas tech, uh, alumni. And so we talked a lot about it. And of course we were both elated when the chiefs drafted him, but, um, you yeah, know, he is the true, you know, he's back to the, the Brett Favre. I mean, he definitely is a true uh, definition of a gunslinger. And, but now, you know, he's starting to learn the craft and, you know, I, I you know, the documentary with Alex Smith this last week, you know, Alex Smith really helped Mahomes a lot be the player that he is today. And, and he's still got a long ways to go. But, um, you know, he's, he's, he's a smart kid and he's learning um, as he goes. And, you know, I, I think that, you know, it's going to be exciting, exciting next several years in Kansas City. I agree, Tim. I think Mahomes reminds me or more of Brett Favre just because of the gunslinging, but also like improvising on the field. I mean, there was times when, you know, Favre was, you know, throwing it sideways and stuff like that just to try to get to the guy. I mean, he could. So I, I agree with that. All right. I really don't have an argument to back it up. I'm just going to say Marino just to disagree with all you guys. <laughs> People don't like the Chiefs and they know that. Dan Marino, he's my guy. Um, no, so I, I do appreciate everybody coming. Kayla, I was just going to type you something in the chat. If you ever let us do this again, I feel – Everybody up here would definitely be willing to talk sports again because we're all missing it. And we do apologize if we didn't touch on anything that anybody here wanted to touch on. Um, this was kind of our first attempt at just kind of putting something like this together. So I don't know if Kayla would ever let us do this again. If we wanted to throw out ideas, maybe we could do some research ahead of time if they had somebody that they wanted us to talk about or teams or sports. I know Matt and I are golf fans. We didn't talk about golf this time with Arnie's Army. I know Jack Nichols, you know, Matt was talking about that, if anybody's golf fans. But, um, you know, trivia. I don't know if you wanted to throw that out there. The trivia thing was that was a fun piece, too, with Gassy throwing it out there. I enjoyed that. Okay, perfect. 
Well, um, if you guys don't have any comments now, you can tell your resident services director, like if you have certain things you want these guys to talk through, and maybe we'll invite them back if it's something that you guys want. Um, I know it was entertaining for myself just to hear you guys um, chit chat about the fun, the fun things. Um, uh, I will probably have to say LeBron might be my person over Colby or Kobe. Thank you, Kayla. Why are you just now talking? She doesn't know right, sports. She know doesn't know well. sports. <laughs> she knows enough for me. I, she called um, him Colby instead of Kobe. Come on. Kobe. No, um, so I was thinking, um, well, that, anyway, I was thinking, I just like to watch him because he, like, has some hilarious, like, comebacks and just, like, his facial expressions and just, like, how, like, animated he is and that's really what I love about him. But you are absolutely not, correct, Kayla. He is a great actor. He really is. <laughs> I was about to say kind of the same thing. I was like, he's very animated when he's flopping, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, okay, guys. Um, I will talk to you guys later. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll talk Thanks. to you maybe next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.